Hi everybody, I am a hacker and it's really nice to have you on board. In this video, we'll look at logging in with the administrator user account. It is a challenge from OWASP Shop, and just to add a little bit background to this video, I am doing a series on CTF that is hacking into OWASP Shop. It's just a walkthrough for beginners to learn how to approach certain CTF. So we are in the middle, we have already configured OWASP Shop, and we already did some, uh, some challenges. Uh, the link to the entire uh, playlist would be in the description. So let's get started. I have opened up uh, OWASP Shop and I have navigated towards the scoreboard. And in the scoreboard, I'm looking at this challenge that is logging in with the administrator user account. So whenever something is related to login, the first thing we, we need to do is look for login page. So I'll come over to the top and in the account, I can find login. So I'll click on that and open up the login page. Now, once I'm in the login page, I will look for certain things. The first thing that I will look at would be the SQL injections. Uh, because as you know, uh, at the time of login, we are going to the database, getting the data and comparing uh, it with the string that we have entered. So the best place to start with the SQL injection. Okay, so if you're willing to find out some really great SQL injection cheat sheet, the portswagger.net provides a very thorough and very good uh, cheat sheet for us. You can come over here and look for a lot of different things that you can do. First one would be to find the concatenation string, also uh, the comments, also the version of the database, the database context, anything you want with SQL injection, you can find right over here. But in order to get you started with what SQL injection is and how it works, let's just first resolve this challenge and then we'll uh, move toward explaining what SQL injection is. Anyway, in order to solve this challenge, I will enter a single quote and after that in the password, I will enter anything I want, any gibberish, and then click on login. And as you can see, we have resolved an error. So after that, I can enter a single quote and then enter any password and then click on login. You would see that once I click the login, it returned object. Anyway, if I open up console and then try to submit, you would see that in the request, we have one get request, one get request and the other one post request. If I click on the post request and then come over to the response, you can see we uh, did receive an SQL error message which means is that this website is vulnerable to SQL injection. Now what I can do is I can come over here and find a cheat from the cheat sheet. Uh, I guess it's not given, but if you are willing to comment something, you would just enter dash dash. And before dash dash, if you are willing to make this condition true, you would use one equal to one. And let's sort out this challenge. Let's sort out this challenge. As you can see, I'm logged in with the administrator account. And the only thing I did was I entered a single quote, then wrote down or one equal to one, and that's it. And then after that, if you're willing, you can enter the, the comment string, or if you're willing, you can leave it as is. Anyway, this was pretty simple. Now let me explain how that worked. Okay, so let me explain how that works. Suppose we have a query that is select star from users where username is equal to this and password is equal to this. Now, what the query does is it looks for a username in the database and it compares it with this string that is entered in the, in the text field right over here in the email. Anyway, once it passes, once this condition gets true, it, it then looks for the passwords and checks whether that is also uh, equal to the one that is stored in the database. If it doesn't, it returns false. If it is, it uh, returns true. What I'm doing is, I'm saying by entering a single code, what I'm saying is close this thing right over here and add an or, which means that if this is true, or the thing after this is true. So we are saying one equal to one, which is always true, and then commenting the rest of the query. So what it will does, it will ignore this part, 
and it will just see that we are true and it will log us in as, as an administrator. So this was pretty uh, easy in this part, in the SQL injection part, and we did completely the challenge. Now let's write down a Python code that automatically does this. So in order to write down this program that automatically does this, what we need to do is we need to open up an empty Python program and then import some libraries. The first one is request library that is used to make requests to certain URLs that we want. The next thing is OS library and the next thing is URL lib. This is used for removing some warnings and errors that we get in the form of HTTPS or something like that. Anyway, the last thing I would do is import uh, JSON. And this is used to work with some JSON data that we will receive from the website. Anyway, the first thing I need is to handle some errors that would be URL lib3 disable warnings URL lib3 dot exceptions URL lib3 exceptions insecure request warnings so what this line will do is this would disable some of the warnings that we will get on our terminal the next thing we need is the proxies and proxies are used to send our requests to burp suit now you can ignore this part the next thing we need to do is work with proxies and before doing that i will open up burp suit so in order to work with burp suit or in order to send the request through burp suit you need to pass all of your requests through 127.0.1.8000 and what it does is it sends the request first to burp suit and then to the website you are willing to send the request to so i'll start the burp and i'm just using the community version of burp so it's free you can use it too why am i using burp because if we mess something up in the code so it would be really easy to debug that in the burp also a lot of the hackers are familiar with burp for them it would be easy and everything would make sense anyway Let's just come back to our code and write down proxies. Proxies is equal to, and I want to add two proxies, one for HTTP, and that would be HTTP 127.0.0.1, and the port number would be 8000. And the next one would be the same thing but for HTTPS and I will save that now the next thing I want to do is write a main function and what this main function will do for now is it will just print that I am main okay and how can we call that we can call that by writing if underscore underscore name is equal to underscore underscore mean call main function now let's run the program and see what it does so i'll open up a new terminal and go to where the python program is remember we named it as youtube.py so i'll write python youtube.py and then press enter and you can see we get that i'm in main once we are done with that the first thing we want to do is we want to check that the user did enter URL and uh, in order to do that we write a try and catch block and that would be try and accept in the try block what I want to do is I want to create a URL variable and to that variable I want to assign the sys.rv and what I want to get is the first element and the next thing I want to do is if they didn't enter a URL what I want to do is I want to print some instructions so that they can understand what they did wrong so what I will do is I will print a minus for error and then say usage percent s URL 
and after that person sys dot arg zero. So in the sys arg zero, we have the program name. In the sys arg one, we have the thing that comes after the program name. So I showed you that if I'm willing to run a program, uh, what I would do is I would write Python and then the name of the program. So in sysarg0, we have this youtube.py and then whatever I enter. So let me show it to you. You know, I will comment down these things and let's just print these. So arg0, and R1 and R2. I will save it and if I come over here and say AR1, AR2, so you can see that the in AR0 we have this program name, in R1 we have the first argument that we provide and in R2 we have this second argument that we provide. Anyway, I will remove everything and then uncomment what we wrote down. So what I would do is I would say usage and then the name of the program and then say enter URL after that. And after that we will uh, also add an example and that would be with a minus that say usage person s and then say www.example.com something like that and then person as and then R V you know, the program name. Then once I'm done, I would exit the program because we are not getting anywhere. We have an error with a zero. Okay, so let's test this out. If this works, fine, we'll move after that. So I'll say Python YouTube.py and you can see we get a usage error. So what is our URL? It's right over here, localhost 3000. And I will come over here and after that, I will enter the URL. And you can see we have successfully ran the program. We have no errors in it. Okay, so once this is okay, the next thing I wanna do is, I want to call a function that would log the administrator in. So for that, I will create a function by the name of login as administrator and then say url and right now we haven't created that function but it's wishful thinking you know and according to our wish we have created another function which receives a url that we have entered from the console and the first thing it would do if i come over to the browser it would go to hash slash login and now that we have created that function, the first thing it would do is I will come over here to the networks and find the request that we are doing to the URL and it's right over here to the login and it's a post and it is going to localhost 3000 slash rest slash user slash login. So I will store this in another variable that is URI and then come back over to uh, the, the browser and the, in the network tape, tab, I will come over to the request and in the request I can see we are sending this data. So I will also create another variable by the name of data and in that data what I would do is I would store the elements that we had. So remember we entered a single quote and then or one equal to one in the email. So I'll copy that as well. So uh, this is our data, you know, Th this is what we requested. Anyway, the next thing I will do is I will write our requests.post and remember this is the request that we have imported earlier. And I want to, if you look at the browser, we are making a post request. So using this request library, you can make get request, post request, put and uh, fetch. So we, what we need is the post request. To the post request, what I want to provide is the URL plus the URI. Remember, we have the URL, which is localhost 3000 and then the URI. So in Python, if you're willing to do concatenation, you can do it uh, using plus. Anyway, 
The next thing we would do is we will send the data. And if you don't know what the request post method is, you can always Google it and find everything else about it. You know, in Python, I came over to the W3 school, but you can search its official documentation and you will find everything. Uh, it is a function that receives multiple arguments. That's it. So the first argument I'm providing is the URL. The next is the data. And after that, I'm pro what I'm providing it is the what if I put to false. And the next thing I want to provide is the proxies that we send. Remember, if you if you don't want to send the request using verb, you can just leave it as is. But if you're something like me, you can provide it, uh, the proxies. And once this is done, I will just come over and print r dot text. And let's save everything. Okay, so now that we are all set with uh, the code, let's come over to our terminal and run the program. And you can see once I run the program, it gets me authenticated. And in the OSG shop, you can see that login admin challenge has been completed now. So this is how you can write the code. Now you can modify the code as we have imported the JSON and uh, with this OS libraries, but as the video is already very long, I would not amend it anymore. I guess it's enough. Just to recap, first we solved the uh, challenge using our browser. The next thing we did was we wrote down a Python program and that was pretty simple. We imported the libraries that we needed. We ignored the URL lib warnings. And just to show you what this library does is if I try to run the program using HTTPS, right, it would throw some errors, you know, some warnings and errors using this. But if I add this URL lib to it, you would see. So once we add this library, you can see we don't get those errors. Firstly, we were getting this error. And now that I have added this URL lib library, we have disabled those warnings and errors. Anyway, so this is pretty much it for this video. I hope you did understood. Uh, if you didn't, you can let me know in the comments down below and I can surely create a follow up video or I can answer your comments directly if the answer is simple enough. So have a pleasant day. Bye for now and I will see you in the next video.